anyone do any travel over Christmas? Any travel over Christmas? Yes, I had some people waving at me who got stuck in Perth for a little bit longer than what they wanted to be uh, in WA. Has anyone else done some travel? I used to, we did a little bit of travel over Christmas, so not too much, but when I was in my previous job, I used to travel quite regularly. And uh, I remember one time I was flying back from central Queensland in a place called Rockhampton, God bless it, and the flight is supposed to be, supposed to be, it's a supposed to be flight of one hour and 15 minutes. It's a very, it's a jaunt. Like it's just, you're up, you're there, and then you land. By the time you get up, you're equalizing and you're coming down. It was supposed to be one hour and 15 minutes. It took us three hours to fly home. I could have flown to New Zealand. I could have flown to and from somewhere else. It took us three hours on this flight from Rockhampton back to Brisbane. And you know what made it even worse is that I had a sinus infection. Oh yeah, it was bad, folks. It was not good. And so the whole time I was trying to equalize, I'm that guy on the plane, like grab my nose and grab my ear and like doing all this weird stuff. I, I really felt sorry for the person sitting next to me. The whole time I was like, I can't. Get, I just let me get off this plane. I just felt so delayed, right? We circled and we circled and we circled and we circled and they built the runway, but they weren't building it fast enough. And we circled some more and we finally landed. That feeling of delay can make us feel what? It can make us feel discouraged or disillusioned or disappointed or disheveled or dejected. How about words that don't start with D? Okay, so it can make us feel hopeless. That feeling of delay it can make us feel fearful. It can make us feel angry or lost or anxious. But the truth that you need to know today heading into 2024 is this, is that in God, delay is not denial in God. When something has not come to pass, it doesn't mean that it won't come to pass. If you need to write that down, get it into your soul and your spirit today before we head into the, the next year. It's only what less than, I can't do the math. It's only a few hours away to go into the next year. That delay is not denial in God. I hope you really catch that in your spirit. So that thing of like, why haven't you come through with that miracle? Why isn't the breakthrough coming? What am I doing wrong? And then there's this scripture in Ecclesiastes, which we all love to hate. We love it when it's good, but we hate it when it's not good. It says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to the end. So God's time is not our time. It's in its time. Don't you love to hate that? I think there's some people in the room who love to hate that. In my, in my own life, I've loved to hate that at times, that the timing of God seems to be out for me at times. We have all experienced a waiting in God. You can't be in this room no matter how old you are. It doesn't really matter. I think you've all experienced a waiting time in God. But the thing is with the delay, this is what happened. God gives you a dream then there is a delay and then there is destiny. That's just how the program works. It's a God dream. There is a dream for the future of the desire of my heart that I want. There's a space and gap of time and then there's a destiny that we get to walk into. But what does God tell us? Why can we trust Him like that? Well, in Jeremiah 29, 11, He says He has a plan and purpose for our lives. It says in Romans 8, 28, that He'll work all things for the good of those who love Him and live according to His purposes. In Romans 5, it says there is pain in the process is not wasted. And Joshua 1, 9, He reminds us as followers of Jesus that He is with us. The truth is that delay is not denial to you. And I want to speak faith and hope and life into your very souls today. That maybe throughout all 23, you were like, God, could this be the year that the breakthrough happens and it hasn't happened? Well, I'm going to tell you today in faith that that delay is not denial in God. It is not denial in God because God is ultimately in control. God is the highest authority. God is not surprised. God is not worried. God is all powerful at all times and can do anything He wants. He's God. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, ah, Lord God, like someone's had a revelation. Ever had an ah moment with God? Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Turn to someone and say, delay is not denial. Turn to the other person who was your second preference and say, delay is not denial today. Delay is not denial. 
Even when it seems impossible, church, even when nothing seems like it's going to work out, even when you've been given that diagnosis or that treatment plan, even when they haven't called back, even when you said that they'd never ha- you'd never talk again, even when there's no offers coming through, even when you don't get the good news, even when, even when, even when, fill in the blank for your life situation. Delay is not denial in God. I want you to get this in your hearts today, that He has not finished with you. He who has begun a good work will see it through to completion. That is who He is. You see, when I was, uh, uh, before I became a pastor, I was a sales executive and I used to travel probably 1,200 kilometers in my car every week, every week. So I would travel, I'd go from the Gold Coast out to Ipswich, out to the south side of Brisbane, and a few times a year I'd go up to central Queensland all the way through Maryborough and Harvey Bay and Bundaberg and um, Gladstone and Rockhampton, and then I'd fly back because I'm bougie like that. So I would, I would drive up and fly back, and, and I would have a great time doing it. But the whole time I did that, I loved every second because I was learning, I was being challenged, I was being grown. But you know what, church? It felt like a delay. Even in that moment in my career, so to speak, it felt like, God, I feel like you put something else in my heart and I was open and honest with the people around me about that and I I did the journey with them. But the whole time I felt like I'm here and I will give everything I've got in this season because I want to honour you, God, and honour the people around me. But it feels like I'm in a delay. It feels like I'm a little bit stuck. It feels like I wish I was there, but I'm back here. So I understand what it can feel like. And even in a sense, maybe your delay is a lot more painful than that. But I'm trying to articulate that I can get in a sense away what it feels like to be delayed because we all know what it feels like to be delayed. You see, God's people in the Bible knew exactly what it felt like to be delayed. If you go back into the Old Testament, the books of Exodus, uh, God brings his people out of Egypt. They are in captivity. They are slaves and he frees them through these miraculous signs and wonders. They're finally released and they head out on a journey, a, a process, right? They're given the dream of the promised land, right? They've had that incredible dream. This is what, that's their destiny we're going to walk through. But there is this 40 year delay for them to get there. And it's in that delay they have to deal with some stuff. And let's just, let's just give you the context of that. They had to deal with what? What's the things that we have to deal with? We have to deal with distractions. If you're writing notes, take it down. The word distractions. You ever been distracted? You ever been distracted? I get distracted every time I get ready to go to bed. Every time. I'll hop into bed. And I'll be like, oh, I forgot to lock that thing. I'll get out of bed, go lock the thing and walk back and like something else is out. I'll put it away and then come to bed and be like, oh, I didn't mean to go get the remote for the fan. And so I'll get up and go get the remote from the fan, come back to bed. And it's like, oh, actually, while I'm here, I might just put that. We all, okay, if you don't know distracted, just send a man to Bunnings. Okay, that's, that's the definition of distracted. You go into Bunnings, I'm just here to buy one thing. And then all of a sudden, you're walking through every aisle and you can name everything on the shelves. You're just collecting prices for the future. We all know what a degree like it is to be distracted. Well, the Israelites, God's people, knew exactly what it's like to be distracted. Let me give you some context here. In Exodus chapter 24, God, God confirms His covenant promise with Moses and the people of Israel. He says, you are my people and I am your God. And they're like, Awesome. This is great. And so Moses in Exodus 24 has to go up the mountain, right, to get the Ten Commandments. Then Moses went up the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain and the glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai and the cloud kept covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Can we just hold up for a second? Because that would be pretty amazing. Put yourself there at the base of the mountain. The glory of the Lord comes down. And it dwelt on Mount Sinai. What's the glory of the Lord? Well, often it's discovered as, uh, described as fire, as lightning, as powerful wind. The glory of the Lord came and sat on the mountain. And then after six days, then on the seventh day, Moses was caught up in the midst of the cloud. And now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a what? Devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. So do you think they were second guessing what was happening on the mountain? They knew. They knew what was happening. And so Moses entered the cloud and went up in the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Someone say, that's a long time. It's a long time. But before he went up on the mountain through chapters 25 to 31, there is this download for Israel, God's people, and what to get ready for when he comes back down. 
So it's not like they haven't got a list. They've got a list of things. So let me, what you're like, okay, let's, we're giving them the benefit of the doubt. Let's hear the list. Well, they were told about to, how to build the tabernacle, the bronze altar, the court of the tabernacle, the oil of the lamps, the priest garments, the consecration of priests, the altar of incense, the census tax, the bronze basin, the anointing oil, leaders appointed, the structure, and they're told to rest. However, in the delay, they get a little bit distracted. That Moses up the mountain meeting with God face to face, right? That is how God decided to meet with Moses. And even in the instance of that, the people got distracted. And so Exodus 32, we read what happens. When the people saw that Moses delayed in to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, this man who brought us out of the land of Egypt, who we do not know what has become of him. So Aaron said to him, worst leadership moment of his life, take off the rings of gold that are in your ears of your wives and your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. And so all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, so multiples of the same image. These are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Talk about cheating on someone, right? God has done this amazing miracle, brought them out into the desert to save them, to give them a destiny and a hope. And whilst he's on the mountain meeting with God face to face, Moses, the people get distracted in the delay. And all of a sudden, they've had to deal with something. The biggest distraction to deal with when we experience delay is this. You know, you know what it is? You know, I, I can tell you, I can testify to you right now. The biggest distraction when you feel delay, it's the familiar. It's what you're used to. It's the default of your life. It's the loop that you've already known and know. It's the story that you've been a part of before. The biggest distraction between the God dream you have and the destiny when you're sitting in this place of delay, it's familiar. It's the familiar. Have you ever asked yourself out of all the things they could have crafted, why Moses? Why pick a bull? Why cow? Because it was familiar to them. It was an apis bull. We're going to put a photo up so you can see it. Um, a lot of historians say an apis was an Egyptian idol in the figure of a bull, and it was about fertility, and it concerned with the propagation of grains and herbs. So we already know in Exodus they were missing home. They're already missing their place of captivity. Oh, send us back, kill us now. We want different food, even though you're supernaturally providing for us in this place of delay. We want something else. Give us some meat, give us something to eat. So we're going to make, we're going to fashion a God that we already know before that we've already worshipped before, that we've already come out of and be set free of before so that this is the one that brought us out of Egypt. This is the one who will provide crops and grain and all the things we need. This is the thing that we need. Israel wanted the familiar. How often when we are in a place of delay do we want something that is comfortable, something that spoke to our past purpose or pleasure? We want what's familiar. How often in the delay do we want the familiar? How often when things aren't good with your spouse do we look to find things that are better elsewhere? That were familiar to fill that in our past. What happens when our husband or our wife don't make us feel special anymore so all of a sudden I'm just going to buy that extra thing online just to make me feel good? Too real? Or what about if it's all just too hard? I'm not going to do anything about it for the next generation. All I see, unfortunately, is apathy. They get this God dream for their life. Oh, we're going to do something awesome, the destiny, but in the delay, ah, it's just too hard. So they get a sense of apathy. Oh, I'm just going to let my hair down a little bit more. I'm just going to, I'm just going to relax. I mean, it's just, it's just God's not coming through for me, so I'm just going to have fun. I'm just going to have that one extra drink. I'm just going to try that one extra thing. I'm just going to, I'm just going to go there one more time because I think that's going to fill my cup because it's familiar. You're leading in your life back to the, what is familiar, what is known to you, rather than holding on to the God dream that He has for you. Oh, how the story of Moses and Israel could have been different if they were a little bit more secure in God if they knew who God had called them to be. And the catalyst for me as I self-reflect on my own life is how fast I am willing to run to something that is seemingly familiar instead of God is an indication of how mature I am in my faith. How fast I am to be like, oh God, but you said, or I'm going to go back to how that felt last time. I'm going to go back to gaming for six hours on a night because I just have no purpose. 
I'm going to go back to watching TV shows that I know I, I probably shouldn't because they're kind of wrecking my brain. I'm going to go back to that old bad health habit or that old person who used to text all the time. I'm going to go back because I can't stand in the delay not being comfortable. That I can I tell you that in the delay, God is there. The delay is not denial. 2 Corinthians says, don't go back. 5.17, it reminds us. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. Hey, you ever noticed that? When you've been found new in God and all of a sudden you try to go back to what you know is familiar and all of a sudden it just doesn't taste or feel or look or hit like it used to. It's because you've become a new person in Christ Jesus, that you've become something new and better in God. So let's, dist- let's develop a distaste for the familiar, for the things that want to distract us and ultimately rob us from the destiny that God has for us. Because I want to remind you again today, the delay is not denial in God. Let's not let ourselves be distracted in the delay. Come on, right now, what is the thing? Make it real for you. In this room right now, what is the thing? Name it in your mind. What is the thing that has been your place of distraction? That you're believing God for a breakthrough in your marriage or a breakthrough in your health or a breakthrough in your career or a breakthrough in your family or a breakthrough in your relationships and you feel like He's given you this God dream, this impossible, miraculous dream, but in the middle there's been something that's kind of pulled you back. What has been that thing? Come on, hold it in your mind right now. Because I'm gonna, I want to encourage you what to do. Maybe it's past hurt or disappointment or insecurity or apathy or, or substances you've run through or images you've desired to look at or materialism. I just want more. What are those things that distract you, that hold you to do that? Now, if you have that in your mind, this is what I want you to do. I want you to kind of place it down. And I want to encourage you to double down on the dream despite the delay. So instead of thinking about, oh, I'm in delay, I'm in delay, I'm in delay, I'm in delay, this is not happening. Why don't we take those things that are not happening and place them down and double down on the God dream? Double down, oh God, you said this. You you told me this was going to happen. I'm believing for this to take place. I'm going to start to pray it out loud. I'm going to start to lean into that moving powerfully in my life. When the area of your marriage or your future or your kids or your career or your calling relationship, what would it look like today if we doubled down on the God dream? He say, even in the delay, God, I'm not too sure. It's really painful to go back to that dream again. All I want to do is run back to what's familiar. But in today, right now, before you head into next year, can we make a decision to say, no, I'm placing those distractions down and I'm doubling down on the God dream that he gave me for the future that I want to step into. What does it require? A dream means a cherished aspiration. It means ambition or ideal. To dream in God requires What? What do you have to have to dream in God? It's faith. Faith is what we are required. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and He rewards those who seek Him. Faith to believe that God's delay is not a denial. It's faith in the face of it. It's faith when nothing else is moving. It's faith when it seems like everything's impossible. It's faith when nothing has changed yet. It's faith when the offer hasn't come through. It's faith when they haven't said sorry yet. It's faith when you haven't got the healing yet. It's faith in the, in the face of that. I'm calling out of you hope and the desire in God because He is miraculous and miracle working and all powerful and nothing is out of His hands to make come to pass. But you would go into next year, eyes lifted up, dreaming bigger about what God would say, not looking at your feet stuck in the mud for where you are right now. Come that we want to be a people who look to the future, who are looking forward, who are moving forward to what God has called us to, not stuck to where we once were, but believing Him for His best in our lives. That delay is not denial in God. Philippians 1.6 says this, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I wish that I could say to you that every time I've been in delay, I've never got distracted. But that would be a lie. Because I'm human just like you. And sometimes it can feel like in life we're on that flight, like I talked about at the beginning, and we're just circling the airport. We can see where we want to go. We're looking out the window, seeing our destination. We've seen other people around us land before us. 
And we start to think to ourselves, when will it be my turn? When will it be my go to touch down and to experience the fullness and the future that God really has for me? That in the midst of that, I want to instill in you faith today that God's purposes are not done. If He's not done, He's not done. If he has, the, he has the last word on everything. I want you to be filled with faith for the future that God has for you today, not stuck in the mud to where you might be. You might feel as though you're in this holding pattern, but God wants to move forward. So 